Welcome back to Yahoo Finance Live. I'm senior health reporter Anjali Kimlani, and I'm here at the J.P. Morgan Healthcare Conference in San Francisco. And joining me now to discuss a lot of interesting things is the Roche CEO of Pharmaceuticals, Teresa Graham. Teresa, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you so much for having me. It's so great to see you in person. Yeah. <laughs> so. GLP-1s, I have to start there. We know that is the topic du jour. Everyone's focused on it, among some other things. But it's one that Roche has recently invested in. Coming back into the space after some time off, what is that like now? What is the company focused on? And how do you plan to differentiate in what is going to be a crowded field? Yeah, so at the beginning of last year, we really took a step back and, and, and took a hard look at the cardiovascular and metabolism space. I mean, I think, you know, more than anything else over its 125 year history, Roche has defined itself as a company that follows innovation. We've been much less focused on specific therapeutic areas and much more around where do we see innovation that can actually drive global health forward. And so as we are really having a uh, a little bit of a renaissance in the cardiovascular and metabolism space. We're learning so much more about human biology. We're learning so much more about the genetics of disease. It really seemed to us the right time to, to sort of take another look about how we expand our footprint in the cardiovascular and metabolism space. So obviously our first move was the partnership that we did with Alnylam early in the year with Salpicerin around hypertension. Um, but clearly as we were thinking about where did we want to go in cardiovascular, I mean Cretin, just makes a lot of sense is a backbone for many other things that could potentially be possible. And so, you know, we really put our heads together and said, okay, what's the kind of company that we want? You know, we want somebody with a clinic ready asset. We want someone that's got something that's differentiated. We'd love someone with a pipeline. We'd love someone that has some really solid research experience in this space. And you know, we didn't have to look very far. We just had to look across the bridge into Berkeley to find Carmont and realize that it was really exactly the kind of company that we were looking for. And so I think you know, between the, the lead asset, CT388, which as you mentioned is a dual antagonist, and we really do believe has the opportunity to be a best in class uh, drug. Um, we also believe that there's a lot resonant in the Carmont acquisition that could actually be really useful as we think about where incretins might have a place outside of obesity and weight loss. Yeah, that was gonna be my follow-up, which is there's clearly that movement, right? You have to be able to differentiate yourself against the current duopoly because mm -hmm. they've got that base market on lock. So in addition to coming out with sort of a monotherapy for obesity, what else do you think is the potential? Where else do you see opportunity for Roche? So maybe let's just start with the obesity market itself, because I think we get that question a lot, right? Like, how are you going to differentiate in the space? I mean, first of all, let's just sort of remember that in the next couple of years, we expect something like 4 billion people around the world to be obese. It's half the world's population. Um, I think conservatively, many analysts estimate that this is something like a $100 billion market. So I think clearly there's going to be opportunity for multiple players to, to be in this space. And we do think that the profile of CT3 is such that it could actually be a best in disease, that it could be more tolerable, that it may be able to be more efficacious, um, and that it could just be a great second generation molecule. But then I think there's emerging science in this area that particularly in certain neurological diseases, it seems like incretins might have scientific applicability. And so I think that's really the next stage for us as we think about the deal closing and we really start drinking into the biology and where we might go from here. I mean, I think there is potential that we could see this particular pathway be relevant in, in more than just obesity. We're at one of the biggest deal-making conferences uh, that the industry looks forward to. It's been kind of a slow one this year, but it's not for lack of trying. There have been deals pre-JPM, Roche on the list of that. I wonder, what do you think is an area that you can focus on? What are some kinds of acquisitions you're looking to make or partnerships you're looking at right now, considering you're one of the companies that really has the capacity to do so. Yeah. So I think last year we did about 71, 73 deals across our, our late and early stage. It's about the same number of deals that we typically do. Um, I think what was different for us last year is we did a little bit more in the later stage. Um, I think we will continue to look across the entire spectrum of therapies um, or therapeutic areas to really think about where is their groundbreaking science. And I think this is actually one of the things that's the coolest for me about working at a company like Roche is that we're, you know, while we have leadership in oncology, and neuroscience and ophthalmology and you know we are we're making some really significant investments in cardiovascular and metabolism 
Um, you know, we also are in immunology, uh, obviously, with the Televan deal that we did last year as well. Um, I think you know we really are singularly focused on just finding those therapies that can materially change the standard of care for diseases with high unmet need. So you know where are we focused? I think we're focused anywhere where we believe that there is breakthrough science out there, um, and you know we are really committed to making sure that we maintain the financial flexibility that when we see that great science, you know whether it's late stage, early stage, or preclinical, that we can really jump on it. So basically, the doors are open. Do you hear that, guys? <laughs> <laughs> Teresa Graham, Roche CEO of Pharma Schools, thank you so much. Thank you so much for having me. It was a real pleasure.